this is a really technical, legal, nerdy one. Um, it's probably of you know more interest to lawyers, but it's something that's going to have a, a major effect on a lot of people. So let me explain what what I'm talking about, and it's going to be easier if I just give a bit of a leading because it's all to do with proving things in court and burdens and standard of proof. So just to give you the background, um, when we talk about cases, we talk about the burden of proof and the standard of proof. So the burden of proof is who whose job is it to prove things? So in a civil claim, it's the claimant's job to prove their claim. You know, the defendant doesn't have to prove anything. It's like for you to prove it. And if you get a prima facie case, then, you know, I have to defend it. Um, sometimes that can swap. Say, for instance, malice is an issue. It becomes, well, you know, the claimant has to prove the, cl- the case, but then the defence can raise and say, well, we can raise a defence that, you know, qualified privilege or something like that in defamation. And it's like, so that's for us to prove. And it's like, oh, well, but we can defeat that by showing malice. So that's sort of for us to prove. But in civil, it's all on what we call um, the balance of probabilities. Is it more likely than not? That's the test. Sometimes people say it's 49%, 51%, but courts don't like doing in numbers. This is to be differentiated between the criminal burden and standard of proof. The criminal burden of proof is always on the prosecution, except in what we call Section 101 offences, where once the Crown have proved certain elements of an offence, you're guilty. But you can raise a defence, but you have to show your defence on the balance of probabilities. Um, it's probably easy to give an example. Um, it's an offence to carry a bladed article, you know, over sharp thing over three inches, without a good reason. All the prosecution have to prove is you're carrying the offence, you know, the article. If you say I've got a good reason, it's for you to prove it, okay? But only on the balance of probabilities, right? So I'm hoping you're sort of getting the gist here. Now, what happens in a civil case if the allegations are very, very serious, like? allegations of criminality or conduct akin to criminality. Well, there's always been this idea that we only have one standard of proof, balance of probabilities, but you have to prove it to a higher... (laughs) You need a higher requirements of evidence. You need more cogent evidence. Use all sorts of terms for this. Um, The example they give is, um, if you were to say, I saw a dog in Regent's Park, and you wanted me to believe you, you'd need less proof than... If you said you saw a lioness in Regent's Park. For me to think it's more likely than not, I might need more evidence of the lion situation. So that's always been the idea. And what they've always said is, right, if in civil proceedings it's a serious allegation, then although we're going to say it's the balance of probabilities, we're going to expect evidence that's almost enough to prove it so that you are sure, you know, beyond reasonable doubt, you know, to the criminal um, standard. Uh, And the idea is it's because, you know, We've got this idea that the more unlikely something is, the more evidence we need to prove it. But what the court said is very interesting there, because it said, yeah, that's a great principle. That, that just makes sense. The more unlikely something is, you know, the more evidence to prove it. But crime's not unlikely. And this cropped up with some, they were getting some orders against some alleged gang members. And what they said is, what's the standard of proof? And they said, well, these are civil proceedings. It's just like an injunction. It's to stop them hanging around and you know making, making videos and things. Uh, but they said, because it's effectively criminal conduct, it should be you've got to effectively put enough evidence a, a, as you would actually to convict them. Um, but this has gone all the way to the House of Lords, and they've said, well, no, because you know crime's not inherently improbable. People commit crimes all the time. So no. So basically, all you need to prove is on the balance of probabilities, and you only need the same sort of evidence you'd need to prove anything on the balance of probabilities. So that's interesting, because that's going to affect a lot of cases, because like in disciplinary hearings, for instance, um, the idea is you've got to prove the conduct pretty much to the criminal standard, because you know the serious consequences. So the general thing has been, if the consequences are going to be serious, because the allegations are serious, you need more evidence. But now they're saying, well, actually, that's not the case. So this is actually going to affect a lot of people in a lot of areas. Um, so like I said, I hope you found that interesting, because it's it's something that's sort of slipped under the radar a little bit, because it's not, you know, it's not sort of juicy news, but it is going to be very important. Anyway, if you did find that useful, please consider clicking the like button and also possibly subscribing. Thank you.